Welcome everybody. I'm Paul Herman with CCLI. Here today with Goatee's newest recording artist, John Reddick. John, great to talk to you. Great to be here. First of all, if you could, tell us about your background. Well, I was born in North Carolina, but I grew up in Memphis, so I spent most of my time in Memphis, Tennessee. Ooh, yeah. 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 And the music scene there? Yeah, music scene there. My dad was a preacher. He mm -hmm. is a preacher, actually. My mom was a pianist, and so I just grew up in church. And yeah. Later on, started doing things in the gospel industry mm -hmm. there in Memphis. Let's talk about one of your songs, You Keep Hope Alive. Mm. Tell us about that one. A couple of friends of mine, Anthony Skinner, Jess Cates, we, uh, we got together and we decided that we'd be writing some songs. We wanted to write some songs for church, for our congregation. Um, and during that period of time, the incident in Charleston happened. Mm. And I remember it happened on a Saturday, which is, is hard when something like that happens on a Saturday and then yeah. you got to get up on Sunday morning. And yeah. I remember uh, somebody asked me how I was doing. Mm -hmm. And the thought I couldn't get out of my head, I have three amazing kids and my son, he was 12 at the time. I couldn't wrap around my, I couldn't get my brain wrapped around the idea that somebody would hate my son without knowing him. Mm -hmm. Like I have a great kid, you know, yeah. all of them are amazing, but he's just a sweet guy. Mm -hmm. Just, he's gonna stand up for anybody, you know. Right. But I just couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that somebody would not like him mm -hmm. just because. Yeah. And, um, and I remember getting ready to go into the second service and I couldn't, I was backstage weeping like, mm. um, and one of the frustrating things for me was I didn't have, I'd go through the song list and I'm like, God, none of these songs meet me where I am right now. I'm like, yeah. I, none of them are saying you're, you are our hope. Like one is saying that you, you've already done this and you've already done this, but I'm like, God, <laughs> like yeah. this is still happening. This is still a real thing. And I just remember I'm feeling a little hopeless in that, but, um, yeah. but leading in spite of it. And later that week, uh, Anthony, Jess, and I, we, we sat down and we, we were writing and, he, and almost as if it was an answer to the cry that I had for God, he said, hey, I was thinking about this song. What do you think about this Keep Hope Alive thing? And I'm like, well, first I remember Jesse Jackson. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but all of a sudden it was, um, it was uh, the realization that people may not use this term a lot. Or, uh, there are a lot of people who may not think about hope in that kind of way, but yeah. we also talked about how it may just be one of those things that are about to be needed. You know, mm -hmm. the people are about to need that from God. And next thing we know, there's this other catastro catastrophic event that happens, storm, you yeah. know? And so it's just, right. we just started wrapping our minds around that and God was walking us down that place, mm -hmm. that path. Tell us about another song of yours, God Turn It Around. God Turn It Around. I, I remember one day I was talking to my dad and we're, we're me in a few words, <laughs> so, uh -huh. at least with each other. And so yeah. for the first time, we were on the phone for maybe two hours, which mm -hmm. was, that's unknown for us mm -hmm. um, with each other. Yeah. But it was the first time in all of my adult, in all of my life that I've ever heard his story. Mm. The both of us, actually for both of us, we were sharing our stories. Mm. Um, and that wasn't what we intended to do, but it turned into this moment of us. Yeah talking about some things that happened in our lives and and um, feeling the sadness of those things. Um, I heard of it, but also feeling this peace. I was feeling this peace um, and having something that I hadn't had before with my father, mm -hmm. which is noticing how much I was like him in so many ways uh -huh. and never realizing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I remember getting off the phone um, with like these tears in my eyes, but they were, like I said, there were tears of sadness, but there were also tears of joy. And I was thinking, you've really, God, you've really turned our relationship around. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, I was sitting on the piano for maybe three hours, um, singing, meditating, crying. Yeah. And I, I called my friends, Anthony and Jess, I'm like, hey guys, I don't know what this is, but I'm just gonna give you these fragments. You know, this mm -hmm. is what God is putting in my heart right now. And it became this prayer for everybody who, is still needing God to turn things around. I mean, we all yeah. need Him to turn things around, so mm -hmm. that's where it came from. Nice. Yeah. You know, we talked earlier about the worship world and the gospel world mm -hmm. and the ways that we're seeing those things, mm -hmm. those two worlds coming together now. Mm -hmm. Love your thoughts on that. You know, I, I came to this realization that for all of the integrating that I want our world to do, mm -hmm. I didn't realize how far away from each other we really were. Mm. 
even when we walk closer, it's like the more community you spend, the more you realize, wow. Mm. Not not in, not negative, not necessarily in a negative way. Right. It's just that. Just the differences. Yeah, just the differences. We don't realize how you know uh, how far the differences are, and so what I've really been appreciating is seeing so many people walk towards this center place mm -hmm. um, in spite of all the differences and yeah. being okay with like learning okay okay this is how this is and this is how this is you know and learning from each other and all these different things so it's it's past um um it's past the idea of listening to a type of music that you don't normally listen to you right know? yeah so it's it's beautiful what, I, what I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. People are walking miles and miles and miles to meet each other in places mm -hmm. that we've never met each other before. Yeah, it's exciting to see. It is. Yeah. It's, it's refreshing. Any final thoughts for our worship leaders and worship teams out there? Hmm. A final thought that I would say is that we have an opportunity. Oh man, it's a blessed opportunity. We get to worship first of all, right? Yeah. But it's an opportunity for us to walk alongside each other we use music for the tool but it's an opportunity to walk alongside each other um, in a space where people have to lay down all of their other different things their their crowns or their you know successes and everything like that like it's a it's a vulnerable place and it's a place where i feel like god really meets us as who we are which are people who have to have him get to yeah. lean on him and we get to we get to hear what God is saying in these spaces. And so that's a privilege that is like no other. But I guess the thought is to appreciate what God has called us to do yeah, and steward it well. Yeah. John, this has been so good. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Take care.